I'm Mark Rabinov from Melbourne, Australia. I just wanted to ask you, how do you judge the right margin of safety to use when investing in various common stocks? For example, in a dominant, long-standing, stable business, would you demand a 10% margin of safety? And if so, how would you increase this in a weaker business? Thank you. We, we, we favour the businesses where we really think we know the answer. And therefore, if a business gets to the point where we think the industry in which it operates, the competitive position uh, or anything is, is so chancy that we can't really come up with a figure. We don't really try to compensate for that sort of thing by having some extra large margin of safety. We really go on, try to go on to something that we understand better. So if we buy something like C's Candy as a business or Coca-Cola as a stock, uh, we don't think we need a huge margin of safety because we don't think we're going to be wrong about our, uh, about our assumptions in any material way. Uh, what we really want to do is buy a business that's a great business, which means a business is going to earn a high return on capital employed for a very long period of time and where we think the management will treat us right. And we don't have to mark those down a lot uh, when we find those factors. We'd love to find them when they're selling at 40 cents on the dollar, but we will buy those at much closer to a dollar on the dollar. We don't like to pay a dollar on the dollar, but we'll pay something close. Uh, and if we really get to something, you know, when we see a great business, it's like if you see some, somebody walk in the door and you don't know whether they weigh 300 pounds or 325 pounds, you still know they're fat, right? You know, and so, if we see something where we know it's fat financially, we don't worry about being precise, and if we can come in in that particular example at the equivalent of 270 pounds, we'll feel good. But if we find, if we find something where the competitive aspects are, it's just the nature of the business that you really can't see out five or 10 or 20 years, because that's what investing is, is seeing out. You don't get paid for what's already happened. You only get paid for what's going to happen in the future. The past is only useful to you in the extent to which it gives you insights into the future. And sometimes the past doesn't give you any insights into the future. And in other cases, like the stable business that you, uh, you postulated, um, it probably does give you a pretty good guideline as to what's going to happen in the future. And you don't need a huge margin of safety. You, you should have something that you all should, always should feel you're getting a little more than what, uh, what it's worth. And there are times when we've been able to buy wonderful businesses at a quarter of what they're worth. But we haven't seen those, well, we saw it in Korea here recently, but you don't see those uh, sort of things uh, very often. And does that mean you should sit around and hope they come back for 10 or 15, you know, wait 10 or 15 years? That's not the way we do it. If we can buy good businesses at a reasonable valuation, we're gonna keep doing it. Charlie? Yeah, you're, that margin of safety concept boils down to getting more value than you're paying. And that value can exist in a lot of different forms. If you're paid four to one on something that's an even money proposition, why well, that's a value proposition too. Uh, it, it's high school algebra. And people who don't know how to use high school algebra should take up some other activity.